All right. Welcome back to the Vintage Fisherman. Today, I'm working on a um, pin 430. This is a ultralight. 420 would be the smallest reel in this series. Um, I guess you could say this is a light. Well, no, it's more of an ultralight. And uh, it's got a couple of issues, but I'm, I'm fixing it up for a friend. We're doing a little trade on some reels. And uh, I got this in in an auction. And uh, it, uh, it's not in bad shape. The knob was a typical problem with these reels. Um, the knob gets cracked up. And I was able to repair it. And I uh, just got to do a little fouling on it. It'll be good to go. Um, the drag washers are a little warped you'll probably have to find him one of those and possibly a knob if he wants a pretty one but it's in good shape otherwise it's fully functional it uh it's a very smooth little reel so i'm gonna take it apart and we're gonna service it and i'm gonna ship it to him first thing pull the handle on a 430 you and and all the, the z's too um you always have a on the SS's and the Z's, you have a washer underneath the handle. Take that off. Uh, next step is the screw on the side. Make sure you match up your screwdriver size to that. This one's just in really good shape. It's got all the, you know, all the labels and stuff on it, which is kind of unusual. These things get to this point, and this, this label here is usually missing. And, uh, just makes for a blank looking little reel and you got to figure out well is it a 430 a 420 what is it next step is to remove this screw right here on the axle shaft we're going to slide the axle shaft out if you can't see it very well i'm kind of at a distance here that rascal is tight move up and screwdriver side there it goes don't think this reel's ever been apart that's always good when they turn smooth and they've never been apart uh, like that take that part of the spool off of there another thing to look for on these reels is these little tabs that the quick release locks into they are known for because people just start ripping on the spools and don't push the button in far enough and it breaks those tabs and uh i don't know if this axle shaft is still available from pin i'd have to look it up and see but uh be careful with these reels they're just getting harder and harder to find parts for them and, uh, yeah so you use a little tlc when you take one apart not wanting to come apart sometimes you gotta work at them a little bit the last couple of reels I've gotten have been a little pain all right spray a little WD-40 up in there just kind of break up that old grease and it's it's coming so there's the axle shaft and it's all in good shape I almost hated to get rid of this reel. I was going to keep it for parts, actually. I fished with a bunch of these 430s on the creeks and streams around here. I probably have 10 of them. I, don't, I know I don't need that many, but it's always nice to have a spare one and spare parts. for All down the road, although I'm getting to the age now where I doubt I'm ever going to wear these reels out. <laughs> so... It's all good. Uh, next thing I do is I always take the uh, the bales apart. This has an internal trip, of course, and um, so we got a mechanism over here, and you got to pay real close attention to how that goes when you take it apart. So let's uh, let's start on that. start right here we'll take the roller off of it 
underneath the roller, you've got a base that goes in right there. The screw goes through it and into the roller, into the bell, and the roller rides on that boss right there. So that's how that goes together. I'll show it in a little bit better detail when I put the reel back together. It's wanting to be stubborn. Either that or my hands are still frozen from working outside today. The reel, uh, your screw there has a star washer underneath it, lock washer, whatever you want to call it. I always take that out. It goes in right there. The lock star washer, that's where it goes. It goes underneath that screw. There's the base. Your bell spring on this one is over here. Okay, so take this side apart first. I use a wide blade. This Craftsman uh, screwdriver you can pick up in any Ace hardware is just about right for these bell screws. It doesn't mess them up. If you put too small, if you put a little screwdriver like that in there, or even this one, and turn it and it slips, it's gonna it's gonna mess them up. This bell screw on this side, and this is a good point to remember. The side where the roller is is always aluminum on these uh, 430s, and the side where the bell spring is is always uh, steel, chrome plated, maybe it's chrome plated brass. And that just slides off the bell spring to get the bell spring out because I clean my reels 100%. Some people just spray a little bit of WD 40 up in there, and that's fine, you know, but. I'm kind of OCD about cleaning stuff, and that's why I look at the gunk up in there, you know, it's, it's pretty ugly. So that'll all get clean. So that side's good. Let's go over here and take a look at this side. Now this side here, it as it comes around, to when you flip the bale to, to cast, it moves a little tab over there. And then when the, when the spool or, or, the, or the rotor comes around, it hits this little metal piece down here and it flips the bell back and use the spring tension to flip it the rest of the way. So all this has got to come apart. It is a little tricky sometimes to get back together. You don't have to take it apart. Like I said, if it's not real bad, if it's real you've been using you haven't dumped it in the water or laid it in the sand on a sandy bank or beach, whatever, it's probably just fine. So I took the arm off. There's a little slot in the spool or rotor that that goes in it turns and it flips that can't really get that wrong to be honest with you folks the next thing i'm going to do you have to take this back piece off be careful there's a small spring we're going to try not to let any springs go flying on us but there is a little spring in there I'm going to try to show you all, because I know people uh, question this a lot, how these things go back together. So you got a screw back here. It's not always the easiest to show. I'm using my camera too, folks. Sorry, my phone, my camera and my phone because, uh, yeah, I haven't got around to setting up my camera yet. That's just a cover. It's full of creek mud. You got a, you got a little pivot there and you see how it's made you got a, it's wider at one end it's got a little slot cut out for the spring there's a cool spring underneath there and it locks over against this tab really hard to see there's a spring goes there and it loops around this and locks into this tab you got the thicker part of this goes here and the thinner part goes up there and it makes contact with the next piece we're going to take out and I'm, gonna grab, I'm just going to real easily pull this out so that the spring doesn't go flying. There is the spring. Uh, that's how it goes. Now we're going to take this top piece. I don't think has a spring in it. I think it just it uses a spring tension from that one to flip it back to its home position. A little screw comes out, a little cover comes off, and there is no spring in there. But let, 
notice the orientation, how that goes, okay? Your outer part of the rotor is going away from the camera. That's how it goes. My camera's in reverse, to remember that, folks. But that's how that goes. And now the rotor is completely took apart and ready to be clean. And uh, I'm going to actually clean this reel tomorrow. I'm doing a disassembly today. The next step of this is to turn off your anti-reverse. Once you flip the lever up, and you're going to push this shaft. I'm going to try to put this push this shaft out. It's a little gunked up. There's that. Oh, there we got a bent. That did not come out with that like it was supposed to. Yeah, I did that one wrong, folks. I'm going to have to do a little repair work here. So I should have probably just let it come out with the... I forgot, this one's got a silent anti-reverse. Yeah, sometimes uh, you can do a hundred of them and still, still get it wrong. These are easily fixed. Don't freak out. As long as you don't break the teeth off, you are good to go. So that should have, I should have allowed that to come off with the uh, anti-reverse cog. And I did not. And it would, it should have come off like that. So I had to go through and, and, you know, I bent one of those little tabs, but I bent it back. We're good to go now. That actually can come off of that. Uh, actually, no, it does not come off of that. Never mind. We'll just clean it with it on there. Now I can take the cross wind off of there. Uh, I'm going to clean it with it on there too because it's not in too bad a shape. This reel is not bad at all. I'm going to scrape off some of the heavy paraffin that's left over from the dried up grease. Basically turns into like a candle wax. And when we talk about reels being grease choked myself and the other channels that work on these reels that's what we're talking about is that that terribly gunked up grease that just seems to be everywhere and my, my cleaner gets that grease out pretty pretty good i don't have to worry about that too much i use an ultrasonic cleaner i heat it to 140 degrees I don't leave plastic parts in for more than a, two minutes. I do leave metal parts in for the whole cycle and it does really well. And sometimes I'll go, I mean, I say a cycle is five minutes. Some parts I'll go 10. But, uh, yeah, we got that. We got that ready to go in the parts cleaner and go just like it is. You know, the only thing left is, and I do go ahead and I, like I said, I strip these reels all the way down that little metal tab. I'm gonna clean it up good. Comes off that screw right there. If you get confused on the screws, uh, it should be pretty obvious on this reel. There's only about three or four screws. I keep everything separate. Everything that goes with the body goes over here. Everything goes with the bail goes over here. That little piece will really only go back on this reel one way. If you try to put it this way right here, it's not it's not going to line up. It, the screw will go in it, but barely, and it's going to not ever tighten down right. It goes just like that. Put that in the pile. Now I gotta get this, there's a snap ring or a circle clip that holds the bearing in. Now folks, the bearing's in good shape. I'm not gonna try to reinvent this thing. We just gonna clean it up. Uh, sometimes you gotta fight these a little bit.
Here we go. Now, once you get it started, I use a exacto knife. It's pretty beat up. There's not much sharpness left to it, but it's thin. Put your thumb right there and keep this clip from flying across the room and get just start working it around. And once you get it out there, you can pull the clip out. That's what it looks like. It's a circle clip, E clip, whatever you want to call it. Now, the worm gear just pulls straight out of the body. Uh, I don't remove the eccentric and the lever. There's no point in that. It will clean up good. I'm going to soak all these parts in WD-40. I will remove the bearing. And I'm going to clean the bearing on the outside. If the bearing is in good shape, it's not making any grind. We don't need to replace it. You can't save, once a bearing's making noise, folks, you, you really can't save. If you got something really rare and you can't find a bearing for it, you know, you might want to pop the shield off and try to clean it up. It's, or if you're on a fishing trip in the middle of nowhere and you can't get parts and you just need to get the thing going again, you know, you can pop the shield off, shoot a little grease into your bearing, but it's not worth all that. And bearings really should have oil anyway. So we're going to put some as good really good quality bearing oil I've got here that I mixed up and uh, we'll let that soak we need to clean all this thick wax paraffin whatever you want to call it off of this main gear um, some people use paper towels cloths shop shop cloth shop Scott shop towels whatever you call it. I use these these wiping cloths from Ace they're fairly cheap you get like a hundred of them in a the bag or something they last a long time a lot of the tools I use are gun cleaning tools you can get these on Amazon this is a set of brushes made by Wheeler I think it is yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna clean those uh teeth out as best I can so when I put it in the washer first thing in the morning all that stuff will come right off and I'm also going to soak all this stuff in WD-40 tonight so the only thing left to do is clean the body the rest the body is going to go in my um, WD-40 vat as I just said I have a three gallon vat over there of WD-40 I'll take the top off, put the stuff in there, let it soak overnight. WD-40 will not hurt your paint. Will not hurt labels. You can put that in there and it will not take any of the, dis, it won't discolor it at all. It'll just clean it. It won't loosen up glues. Um, it's just, it's all around, it's all around a good deal for, for fishing reels. Um, if it's a painted reel or a plastic reel, it always goes in WD-40. And so... Let's uh, soak it all down so it'll loosen all that mess up overnight. And the nose parts will go in the, into the uh, parts washer, and that's it. I'll bring you back tomorrow when I get a chance to get back down here to my room. Well, good morning. Back to the vintage fisherman. I'm working on this uh, 430 SS pin. Let's put it back together. Um, I'll start out with the, something simple like the spool assembly. Uh, get the quick release spool on these models. That'll go up in there. This drag washer's really messed up. The new owner's gonna try to find one. So you put the Teflon in, and then you got a solid washer, metal washer spring washer and cap he's going to try to find another one of those teflons and a new cap that's done let's move on to the rotor assembly it's so much fun <laughs> okay how does this thing go it goes like that 
If I'm wrong, I'll, I'll come back and do a correction. It's been a few days since I've done one of these. And then this. That spring's got to wrap around and lock in. So, so, I always put a little dab because I think he's going to use this in salt water. So we're going to make sure these uh, these threads get uh, lubricated really well. The small plate goes on right here with the screw. It's early in the morning, folks. I've had, I've had my coffee, but that don't mean I'm awake yet, or everything's working like it should. Screws on there. Hopefully, this will not fly apart. And you've got this little cover. Actually, goes on like this. It's going to try to come apart on me. I figured it would. Dang it, darn it. Stay in there, little guy. Glad it did that, though. I need to put some grease right there. Grease is twofold when it comes to these reels. Um, if you're going to use it on the beach and sand, even if you don't, even if you're careful, don't lay your, your reel down. Uh, sand still gets up in your reels just from what's blowing in the air anybody's fished the, the beach knows this it gets windy and and for whatever reason this thing won't want to go together should just snap right in there Yay. So, <laughs> like I said, it's early in the morning. Got that cap on there. I'm going to run it long. The long screw goes in this. And when you push this piece, that should fold down. That's your bail release. You can over tighten the screw, so pay attention to that. Make sure everything works free. This really can't go wrong on this. It's going to go, this, it sits in there and it takes the um, aluminum screw and that's why it's real important to get some grease on that because it will corrode and this is a metal body on the rotor on these reels and that screw will corrode if it gets in salt water. I know he's going to use this in salt water because he lives on the coast. You know? Don't fish it. Got that. The bail spring. Put a little bit of lube down in there just to kind of help everything live happy in there. Get 
go ahead and put the cover on, but don't tighten it. Just set it on there. Put the screw in it. Okay, so your bell spring goes in there. You don't, like I said, you don't want to tighten it yet. Put your Maybe tighten it a little bit more than what I had it. Alright. And then this just kind of slides in. You'll just slide it in, line that hole up, and start this screw. Just get it started. Just a little bit of grease up under there. I always use pan precision grease. I use. Lucas Real All. I use Cal's drag grease. I use a lot of WD 40. If something's stuck pretty hard, I use Croil Oil. Sometimes I use Pin Oil. I use Bowel Stalls or Protectant. I use a lot of Q tips. Yeah, anyway, that's some of my go to's there. So tighten this down. The grease squeezed out a little bit, that's okay. The only thing left to do is to build the roller assembly. A little drop of oil right there on the roller assembly. I always put just a little dab of grease where that screw goes into the bell wire then you got the little base that goes in there I'm gonna have a hard time showing all this on film because it's it's very small so you get the star washer then the screw goes in from this side then you go into the base and then the screw goes up into the bell arm that on there hopefully without it flying apart on me here. Always check and make sure your line roller turns. It does. So that is the rotor assembly. Ready to go. That's the hardest part of this reel. Alright. We're going to build the gear assembly now. A little bit of grease with the uh, anti-reverse. We'll slide up on there. I'm going to grease this gear. It's a bronze gear. Pin uh, overbuilt these little reels. You're not going to find an ultralight that's any tougher than this bad boy. That's why he wants this reel. I know he wants to probably go after some. Spanish mackerel with this down on the coast. Probably gonna do some plugging with this reel. Some ultralight plugging. That's what I would guess. So we got that. I'm not gonna worry about oil on this shaft because we're gonna oil it when I get it in there. Okay, so let's see if we can't get this thing to find its way home here. As you go in with this, um, that anti-reverse doll has got to find its way to the, there's a little peg in there that rides in. Once you get it in there, that should do that. Okay, got that. Worm gear. You could do the worm gear first. I just didn't. Probably been easier if I had it, but whatever. Grease that worm gear up really well. 
she gets a lot of abuse. I've already oiled the bearing, the bearing's all in there. Get that all into place. I'm gonna slide that back just a little bit and put some grease where that worm gear goes up into that housing just for a little extra. We'll seat everything down. You've got a split ring, circle clip, C clip, E clip, whatever the hell you want to call it, and it goes down in there. And watch this little bugger, she will fly away on you. I think they're still available through pin, mystic parts, but. Got that home. Put the rotor on next. A little grease on those threads. The rotor goes on. This is probably one of the easiest reels you'll ever build. Oh, John, wake up. I've got this little tab that goes on there. That's It'll only go one way. It looks like it'll go both ways, but actually it only goes one way. So I put that little tab on there that, that kicks the uh, bail back, bail return, and there's a screw on the back side. And then we can put the rotor on. Rotor lines up with this keyed washer here. It's a square keyed washer. You'll drop it on the flats of the worm gear and it'll line it up in the square of the rotor and then put your put your uh, rotor nut on, axle nut, whatever you want to call it. Don't crank these things tight folks, just a just a snug few inch pounds then you've got your axle shaft I don't normally grease the axle shafts some people do I'll put a little bit of oil in this cause this is going to be used in salt water I am going to add a little bit of grease right to the very end and it, when it goes in there that grease will create a little bit of a seal right there where the uh, This thing gave me a fit coming apart, so it's going to give me a fit going together, of course. Okay. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. Get everything lined up again. Put a little bit of grease on there so when it when it starts rotating it'll pack that grease down against there and create a little bit of a moisture barrier or salt barrier and that's all I did that for that's the only reason why I did that put the handle together you've got a nut or a washer and then just a dab of grease I've already lubricated the handle as far as the uh, the fold away mechanism of the handle. Uh, then we're going to put some grease or some oil down in the end of the handle. Everybody see what I'm doing there? Just a little bit. There is a oil port on the main gear shaft. You can take that screw out. Put oil down. That's why I didn't oil it when I put it together. I'm gonna have to oil it later. Shoot you some oil down in there and put the put the screw back on it. Maybe. Okay, so probably everything will 
supposed to fight me today. Okay. There's that. I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to grease all this up really well. But you don't want, look, you don't have to go overboard with it, but just get it where you know it's going to rotate really well. Let's just watch it. See how the cross line works? Isn't that, isn't that a thing of beauty? Gosh, you got to love it. Last thing is the cap or cover, side plate, whatever it will call it. Let's, uh, let's put a little bit of grease on that screw hole. And we'll put it, you don't have to crank this down either, folks. Just snug it. off your excess oil WD-40 and so forth I lubricate the hell out of these reels when I put them together outside and in so that they're protected I know if it's going to get in salt water it's going to need more protection um, this reel is not a, a beauty on the outside but it is a very nice mechanically running reel um, there's no issues with it He's going to be very happy with it. He's just going to have to find him a drag knob if he wants it to be in a, in a washer to get it fully back to function. He can do that. He's a resourceful guy. There you go. Smooth as glass. Doesn't get any better than that, folks. We'll put the bell or the spool on. There it is. Spool's coming down just a little bit far. Listen to it again. Hmm. So what that is is it really needs another washer. Let me see if I can't find something while we're sitting here. We may or may not have anything. So what it is is the uh, spool is coming down just lightly touching. Just lightly touching this... Uh, the rotor and so you can fix that and hopefully I won't be putting line on but hopefully it will spool line okay what I did I added a washer there it took that noise out of it perfect that, that reel is going to be fine there it is Pin 430 SS, probably one of the finest reels ever made, in my opinion. Ultralights or light, whichever way you want to look at it. Most people would call that ultralight, and if the 420 would be a micro light. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if I ever get a subscribe button. <laughs> Talk to you later.